now we are going to study the remaining five more questions five mark questions now the very first question is derive an expression for magnetic field strength at any point on the axis of a current carrying loop using byatt savart's law so first when you consider a magnetic field magnetic field due to current carrying circular loop like if you consider this is the current carrying circular loop having some current i then on its axis at a distance so on its axis at a distance x from the center the magnetic field is given by mu not i r square by 2 into r square plus x square whole power 3 by 2 where i is the current in the loop and x is the distance of the point distance of the point from the center distance of the point from the center and capital r is radius of the loop so capital r is what radius now let's try to prove this result this is the actual result now let's consider the proof now for this first consider consider a circular loop carrying current i of radius capital r now to derive this we need to know what is byatt savart law so according to according to byatt savart's law magnetic field magnetic field due to any small any small current carrying any small current carrying element is given by let's take the small element mu not by 4 pi i dl sin theta by r square where i is the current in the element dl is the length of the element theta is the angle between tangent drawn along the current and the position of the point just like see this is one current carrying element now when you consider a small portion of length dl at any distance r now this is the theta then here magnetic field is db now here db bar is proportional to dl bar cross r bar means it is perpendicular to the plane containing current i mean length vector along the current direction and position r bar because it is the cross product of both of them so this is the thing now using this to derive that consider two elements each of length dl as shown now our element is current carrying circular loop 
Now you consider one small element DL here. Here current is flowing, and here one element of same length DL. Now on the axis at a distance x, when you consider there is a magnetic field due to this, and there is a magnetic field due to this. Why we are considering two elements simultaneously? Because so one of their components get cancel each other, so that you can find the magnetic field easily. Like now this is the R bar, this is the L bar. So this is the magnetic field which is perpendicular to both of them. Similarly, this is the dB due to the other one. Now this is the actual direction axis. Let's take this theta. and this also will become theta so that here one components will become cos components along this direction and in the perpendicular directions the components will become db sin theta and this is also db sin theta so that here db sin theta db sin theta will get cancel each other and db cos theta will get added up so that net magnetic field db resultant will become 2 db cos theta where db is the magnetic field due to this small elements see let's take the radius of the loop is capital r and distance of the element from the point r then the magnetic field db will become mu not by 4 pi i dl by r square sin theta here sin theta means that theta is different this theta is different just take sin alpha but here alpha will become 90 degrees because look at my finger see this is the circular loop this is the element and this is the r bar so r bar is perpendicular to both the planes so that's why the angle is 90 degrees so sin 90 will become 1 so that the small magnetic field due to the small element will become mu not i dl by 4 pi r square now the resultant electric uh, magnetic field is 2 db cos theta so where cos theta is if you look at this diagram see here now this is here check it properly this is theta means this is 90 minus theta then this will become theta then this will become theta here so that from the diagram cos theta will become adjacent by hypotenuse r so that db when you substitute 2 into db is mu not i dl by 4 pi r square into cos theta is capital r by small r now this is the resultant magnetic field due to only two elements but we want and one more thing also here r square means capital r square plus x square so that r will become r square plus x square whole power 1 by 2 see this right angle triangle so this is the right angle triangle so capital r small r small x so hypotenuse is small r and height is capital r and the base is x now the total magnetic field due to circular loop means you have to add all such magnetic field due to each such small element so the net magnetic field will become integration from 0 to pi r actual length is 2 pi r but we are taking only pi r because we are taking simultaneously two elements so that if you increase integrate half of the length the other half will come automatically so that here 2 mu not i r by 4 pi r cube integration dl 0 to pi r equal to 2 mu not i r by 4 pi into r is r square plus x square whole power 1 by 2 whole power 
3 integration dl is l so 0 to pi r how do we substitute the limits final limit minus initial limit so that the magnetic field when you consider b equal to 2 mu naught i r by 4 pi this is x power m whole power n so x power m into n so r r square plus x square whole pi whole by whole power 3 by 2 into this will become pi r so that 2 2 are cancel pi pi cancel so the magnetic field will become mu naught i r into r r square by 2 into r square plus x square whole power 3 by 2 this is what the magnetic field due to circular loop if there are n loops then the magnetic field will become mu naught n i r square by 2 into r square plus x square whole power through by 2 and if they are asking at center at center means distance will become 0 then the magnetic field will become mu naught n i by 2 r so this is the final result of magnetic field due to a circular loop having current so you can say hence proof so this way you can understand so you have to use byatt savart's law and you have to divide into elements you have to divide into components and you have to take the integration and you have to understand how to take the proper limits then you can understand the magnetic field derivation due to a circular loop right so now let's see the next question now the next question derive the expression for the force between two parallel conductors carrying current and hence define ampere see here here the magnetic force between two parallel current carrying wires of infinite length so it is given by length is given by force per unit length equal to mu naught i1 i2 by 2 pi d like this is one wire this is another wire and the distance between them is d and having current i1 and i2 now i1 i2 are current and f by l is force per unit length so we are not finding force we are finding force per unit length as they have infinite length now let's prove this one proof now consider two infinitely long conductors as shown like this is one i1 this is another one i2 now i considered now what we have to understand is see here as there are two current carrying wires so they exert field on each other like let b1 b2 are magnetic fields magnetic fields due to wire 1 and 
wire two respectively on wire two and one. So one will produce field on the second one. Second will second one will produce the field on first one. Like that. Now first thing, what is the direction of field B one on second wire? So here this is the wire one, and this is the wire two. Now we use right hand thumb rule. So the field due to first wire is inward right side. so the field on this one is inward that is b1 now field due to wire 1 on 2 that is given by mu not i1 by 2 pi d at a distance d so the distance between them is how much here d now field due to Wire two on one, that is B two equal to mu naught I two by two pi d. So this is the these are the magnetic fields due to each wire on the other one. Now next thing, when you consider the direction of B two is that is outward. So here the direction of B two on first wire is outward. now if you take the scenario it will be like this see now wire 1 is in the presence of field due to wire 2 that is b2 outward now wire 1 sir wire 2 is in the presence of field due to wire 1 that is b1 that is inward now there is a force on first wire due to field b2 there is a force on second wire due to field b1 now how to find magnetic force on a current carrying wire you have to use left hand thumb rule how the four finger should be in the direction of field like outward and the middle finger should be in the direction of current then see here so the current the thumb will give you the direction of force that is coming this side force on 1 due to 2 similarly if you take the other one field is inward and current is upward then it is coming so this direction that is f to 1 now so use using left hand thumb rule we can find direction of f12 and f21 now force on 1 due to 2 that is f12 equal to force on first one means i1 current i l b sin theta here you can also mention force on a current carrying wire inside magnetic field is given by i l b sin theta but here the theta is 90 degrees that is angle between current and magnetic field so that here i1 into length per unit length let's consider one small length l here one length l you consider here one length l you consider so now we are finding force on that small finite length only i l b that is b2 sin 90 so that force on 1 due to 2 is i1 l b2 if you substitute b2 i1 l b2 is mu not i2 by 2 pi d so that f12 by l will become mu not i1 i2 by 2 pi d now this is the force rightwards now similarly force on 2 due to 1 that is f21 equal to i2 lb1 sin 90 so that will become i2 
L B one is mu naught I one by two pi d. So the force will become F two one equal to mu naught I one I two by two pi d per unit length you have to take, and this is leftward. That means the final conclusion when you consider F one two bar magnitude equal to F two one. They experience equal and equal forces in magnitude. And the direction, if you consider F one two bar is opposite to that of F two one. That's why minus. So they attract each other with same amount of force. that is what the force between magnetic force between two current carrying infinitely long wires if you take anti parallel currents so in case of anti parallel currents also like you take one wire like this one wire like this same separation now i1 and i2 then also f12 equal to f21 equal to mu not i1 i2 by 2 pi d but this is repulsive force it will become so that is the difference between parallel and anti parallel currents so just try to understand and try to solve it so what is the field due to a infinitely long wire you should know it and what is the magnetic force on a current carrying wire you should know it and you should know what is right hand thumb rule and you should know what is left hand thumb rule then only you can find the direction of magnetic field then only you can find the direction of magnetic force then you have to consider the force per unit length now the next question is eighth question that is using phasor diagram derive the relation for current in lcr series circuit now current in lcr series circuit is given by now when you consider that i equal to i not into sin omega t plus r minus pi where i not is current amplitude and pi is phase difference between emf and current or voltage and current and when you consider one inductor one capacitor and one resistor and you connect them in series across one ac source whose emf is v equal to v not sin omega t where v not is amplitude of voltage then i not equal to v not by z where z equal to under root r square plus xl minus xc whole square this is called impedance and the equation for phase difference tan pi equal to x by r r xl minus xc by r so this is what the meaning the equation for the current in an lcr series circuit and this thing we can derive using phasor diagram so how to derive that one let us try to understand now so the thing is proof now consider and lcr series circuit so there is one lcr series circuit so one inductor one capacitor one resistor they connected in series across one alternating source v equal to v not sin omega t as all of them as all of them 
connected in series current must be same current must be same through each of them because it is like series circuit now that current let's take i equal to i not sin omega t plus r minus pi where we don't know what is i not what is pi because when we apply alternating voltage you will develop the alternating current will develop in the circuit and you consider the voltages across the inductor is vl vc across capacitor vr across resistor therefore potential difference across each of them is given by vr equal to ir and vl equal to i into xl vc equal to i into xc where xc is called what reactance resistance of inductor resistance of capacitor we call it as reactance now this this derivation we will do it based on the concept of phasor diagram now what is the phasor diagram phasor diagram when you consider see the reference is current this is the current direction just like we have to consider each one as vectors now the voltage across resistor when you consider in pure resistive circuit you will study that there is no phase difference between voltage and current across resistor and when you consider pure capacitive circuit then current leads so that this is vc and when you consider inductor voltage leads vl so vl leads current by 90 degrees and current leads 90 degrees in case of capacitor now if you consider these are the three voltages across resistor capacitor and volt uh, and inductor now when you consider these are like vectors now vl and vc are in opposite direction so the resultant will become so just like this see this is current this is vr now vl minus vc but here you have to understand one thing that vl greater than vc means this thing will become if vl less than vc will become means then you have to take the resultant like this this is the case when vc greater than vl but here let us take any one case vl greater than vc means like this then the resultant voltage will become in between them somewhere this one where the resultant voltage is resultant of vr and vl minus vc both are like two vectors and the angle between them is 90 degrees so that resultant equal to r under root a square plus b square so vr square plus vl minus vc whole square where v is resultant voltage now v square equal to vr means i square r square plus vl means i xl minus i xc whole square now here if you take v square equal to i square if you take common r square plus xl minus xc whole square implies v equal to i into r square plus xl minus xc whole square under root now this i will become v by r square plus xl minus xc whole square under root and this only v by z where z equal to under root r square plus xl minus xc whole square this is called what impedance of the circuit the resultant of resistance and reactance is called impedance so that the current i not will become what v not by z that is v not by under root r square plus xl minus xc whole square so the first first part we found that what is the amplitude of current now here if you consider this is the resultant voltage i mean applied voltage 
and this is the produced alternating current and there is a phase difference between them if in the second case if you consider this is the resultant voltage and then this is the phase difference between them but any one thing is possible in one particular circuit so that here when you consider the diagram this is v and this is i and this is vr and this is vl minus vc nothing but this also vl minus vc and this is the phase difference now phase difference is theta therefore from this right angle triangle tan theta means vl minus vc by we are opposite by adjacent vl means i xl minus i xc by i r so that here i i will get cancel so tan theta will become what xl minus xc by r this is the equation for phase difference that's why the alternating current in lcr series circuit when you have taken that will be in the form of i equal to i not sin omega t plus r minus phi now if xl greater than xc implies phi is positive implies current leads voltage by phi now if xl less than xc current then phi is negative then current lags current lags voltage behind voltage or voltage leads uh, current lags behind voltage by phi here one small correction see when we have taken vl minus vc here we got voltage and here we got current so who is leading voltage is leading so that's why here you have to understand that See one small correction. See voltage leads current by phi. Then voltage lags behind current by phi. So when XL is greater than means inductor is dominant, then voltage leads when capacitor is dominant then current leads that is the conclusion that is what the derivation of lcr series circuit using the phasor diagram so phasor diagram is nothing but just like vector representation now the next question is derive the lens makers formula now the ninth question is lens makers formula see the lens makers formula is when there is a lens and this is the principal axis this is the object and this is the optical center then the distance of object is u and the corresponding distance of image is v then 1 by v minus 1 by u equal to 1 by f where f is focal length 
and 1 by f equal to mu2 by mu1 minus 1 times 1 by r1 minus 1 by r2 where mu2 is refractive index of the medium of the lens. Mu1 is the refractive index of the medium of the medium in which the lens is placed. Now let's try to prove this one. To prove this, we need to know that refraction 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 through a spherical surface. The first thing what you should know is refraction through a spherical surface. Now when you consider a spherical surface which is separating two media mu1 mu2 of radius of curvature r just imagine so there is one center and there is one radius of curvature and when there is an object at a distance u now it will undergo refraction and image will form at a distance v now the refraction through a spherical surface formula is given by mu2 by v minus mu1 by u equal to mu2 minus mu1 by r this is the formula you need to know it and proper sign convention must be applied that from the center in the direction of incident rays all the distances will be positive in the opposite direction all the distances will be negative and above the principal axis all are positive and below the principal axis all are negative that sign convention must be applied in every case of optics now you consider a lens consider a convex lens of radii of curvature r1 r2 now this is the lens now this is the principal axis one object is here at a distance u then first the ray incident on the first surface which is the interface of mu1 and mu2 then it undergo refraction then actually the image should form somewhere here that is called intermediate image that will not form that is virtual image now this ray will become like incident ray this one for the second surface which is the interface of mu2 and mu1 then again it undergo refraction and the final image will form here and the final image distance let's take v and the intermediate virtual image distance let us take v1 that also just like a virtual object for the second surface so what is happening here is first refraction is taking place from mu1 to mu2 object is o in medium mu1 and image is virtual that is i1 in medium 2 so that when you consider both refractions here one side i am drawing the one refraction now this is object and it is going from mu1 to mu2 and somewhere the image is forming that is i1 and this distance is v1 and this distance is u so that i can write the equation that mu2 by v1 minus mu1 by u equal to mu2 minus mu1 by r1 similarly when you consider the second surface now this ray is the incident ray for this one now somewhere it will intersect that is behaving like object this i1 virtual object so the virtual image formed in the first refraction behaves as virtual object for the second surface so that the final image will form somewhere here 
at a distance v now the object distance is v1 now object is in mu2 and image is in mu1 now mu1 by v minus mu2 by v1 equal to mu1 minus mu2 by r2 now if you add both equations see mu1 by mu2 by v1 minus mu2 by v1 both will get cancel see this one this one and this one both will get cancel each other so what will remain mu1 by v let's take this is 1 this is 2 let's write 1 plus 2 implies mu1 by v minus mu1 by u equal to here mu2 minus mu1 by r1 here minus if you take common it will become mu2 minus mu1 by r2 now mu2 minus mu1 if you take common then it will become 1 by r1 minus 1 by r2 so that the final equation is mu1 by v minus mu1 by u equal to mu2 minus mu1 into 1 by r1 minus 1 by r2 now if you take mu1 common now mu1 times 1 by v minus 1 by u and bring this mu1 on the other side then it will become mu2 minus mu1 by mu1 times 1 by r1 minus 1 by r2 implies 1 by v minus 1 by u equal to mu2 by mu1 minus 1 times 1 by r1 minus 1 by r2 so here if object is at infinity then image form set focus that is equal to focal length image distance so using that thing when you apply 1 by f minus 1 by infinity equal to mu2 minus mu1 into minus 1 into 1 by r1 minus 1 by r2 implies 1 by f equal to mu2 by mu1 minus 1 times 1 by r1 minus 1 by r2 now you consider this is equation 3 this is equation 4 now if you substitute 4 in 3 left side 1 by v minus 1 by u right side in place of this i can write 1 by f so that this is called lens makers formula this is called lens lens makers formula and when you consider the focal length formula mu2 by mu1 minus 1 into 1 by r1 minus 1 by r2 so here focal length of lens depends on medium in which it is placed so that's why focal length of lens is not constant everywhere it changes from medium to medium that is what you need to understand now the last question now derive the expression for refractive index of material of prism in terms of its refracting angle now the refractive index of prism prism material is given by mu equal to sin of a plus delta m by 2 by sin of a by 2 where a is prism angle or refracting angle or angle of prism and delta m is minimum deviation let's try to prove this one what is the thing now let's prove it now the very first thing is consider a prism having angle of prism or refracting angle a as shown 
now there is a prism and this is angle of prism this is one first refracting surface similarly this is second surface now you can also draw like this see actual diagram will be like this so this is the prism now this is this is one refracting surface this is another refracting surface that i am drawing like a simple triangle and the angle between those two refracting surfaces just like this so one surface and the other surface and the angle between them is called the angle of prism so between two refracting surfaces like this so now here consider such prism now let an incident ray falls on the one of the falls on one of the refracting surfaces of prism at an angle of incidence i let's take now the diagram is important and the angle of incidence is i then it get refracted into prism at an angle r1 then falls on second refracting surface second refracting surface at an angle r2 and finally emerge at an angle e like i will show you everything in diagram see here this is the prism now this is the angle of incidence one light ray falls on it and this is the normal this is the angle of incidence now this is air medium this is the refractive index of the material of the prism now here it will undergo some deviation this is the refracted ray now it falls on the second surface now if you draw it falls at an angle of incidence r2 and it got refracted at an angle of refraction r1 so r1 is angle of refraction at first surface and r2 is angle of incidence at second surface now here if you consider the triangle let's take this is a b c and d and e and here the light ray is coming out emerges out at an angle e e is the emergent angle now if you consider this angle what is this angle angle ade that is 90 minus r1 and angle a e d is 90 minus r2 now from triangle a d e a plus 90 minus r1 plus 90 minus r2 should be 180 so that the equation is a equal to r1 plus r2 this is what the equation you will get from the diagram so first it is taking refraction at first surface 
then it is taking refraction at second surface now after this for every refraction at every refraction there is a deviation now first thing deviation at first surface what is the deviation at first surface is it is entering light is entering from rarer medium to denser medium so when light enters from rarer to denser so angle of refraction smaller that's why deviation is i minus r1 light ray bends towards the normal similarly deviation at second surface delta 2 is angle of refraction that is e minus angle of incidence that is r2 therefore total or net deviation delta equal to delta 1 plus delta 2 that is i minus r1 plus e minus r2 then it will become so the delta equal to i plus e minus of r1 plus r2 equal to i plus e minus a because r1 plus r2 equal to a so this is the deviation produced by a prism now when we change the when we change angle of incidence r1 r2 and e changes that means corresponding emergence angle also changes but a remains constant now at a particular i that is also equal to e then delta becomes minimum that is called minimum deviation like if you draw the graph between deviation and angle of incidence it comes like this so at one particular angle of incidence where i equal to e the deviation will become what minimum that is called minimum deviation now other than that you take any deviation value there are corresponding two values of angle of incidence i1 and i2 like i1 i2 are pair like i1 is angle of incidence means i2 will become angle of emergence if i1 is angle of emergence then i2 will become angle of incidence like 20 70 so 20 angle of incidence means 70 angle of emergence if 20 angle of emergence means 70 angle of incidence like that for every set of two angle of incidence the deviation is same so that that minimum deviation at delta equal to delta m minimum deviation the condition is r1 will become r2 and i equal to e then delta equal to delta m equal to i plus i minus a that is 2 i minus a so that i equal to delta m plus a by 2 this is the angle of incidence when minimum deviation is considered now here now consider the refraction at first surface now when you consider the refraction at first surface like this angle of incidence is i and angle of refraction is r1 but r1 plus r2 equal to a but r1 equal to r2 so that 2 r1 equal to a implies r1 is a by 2 now you apply snell's law at first surface now what is snell's law see the light entering from a medium this is the first medium so mu1 equal to 1 is entering into mu2 equal to mu then sin i by sin r equal to mu2 by mu1 then apply 
तो साइन आई बाय साइन आर आर इज आर वन इक्वल टू म्यू टू इज म्यू बाय वन नाउ आर वन इज ए बाय टू सो दैट साइन आई बाय साइन ए बाय टू इक्वल टू म्यू बट आई आल्सो व्हाट इज आई वी हैव शोन आई इक्वल टू डेल्टा एम प्लस ए बाय टू देवरफॉर रिफ्रैक्ट इंडेक्स विल बिकम साइन ऑफ ए प्लस डेल्टा एम बाय टू बाय साइन ऑफ ए बाय टू दिस इज द रिफ्रैक्टिव इंडेक्स ऑफ द प्रिज्म दिस इज द रिफ्रैक्टिव इंडेक्स ऑफ द प्रिज्म सो हेंस प्रूव सो दिस इज हाउ यू हैव टू अंडरस्टैंड this is how you have to solve it one by one step step by step write it neatly clearly and draw each and every diagram properly make every equation clear assume everything whatever you have to then only you can get the full marks right so we'll continue in the other session with the remaining five questions so thank you all we'll continue